What's up Tesla family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I want to break down what's happening with Tesla Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ and a couple of other tickers. I'm also going to break down why tomorrow is going to be a very important day for Tesla as we have production deliveries numbers coming out. I'm going to talk about some big news involving the global markets and what you should be watching for, for Spy and the others, but just note that I am not a financial planner so take nothing I say as financial advice and also if you guys can please check out my Weeble link. If you deposit any amount of money, you're guaranteed 12 free stocks. If you deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. And if you deposit $25,000 more, you're guaranteed 75 of them. The offer ends in just about four weeks from now, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, now let's talk about what's happening to the markets. So for Tesla, we're currently at about 256 a share in the after hours, still dipping with the markets. Uh, we're going to be making a big move tomorrow, most likely before the market opens when deliveries numbers come out. And we'll see how things end up going, right? So the market is a little bit more bearish because we had some bad news that came out. Uh, there's a lot of conflicts right now between Israel and Iran, as many countries like the U.S. are getting involved. And then there's also a lot of things going on involving U.S. ports as there's a lot of strikes by the dock workers. Uh, I think that's very important as well as it's affecting supply chains. And we'll have to see how all of this news perpetuates. So this news is bearish so far as we're entering October, which tends to be a bearish month for the markets. But for, 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 for Tesla, whether or not we continue to dip or not, that depends on another big factor. And that's why I want to focus on Tesla news first before I break down news about the markets, then the charts for Tesla spy and the others. All right, so what's happening for tomorrow for Tesla? Tesla is going to be making a big gap up or gap down depending on our data. We could be looking for either the 270s or the 240s, but that depends on this right over here. So at 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, about 30 minutes before the market opens, it's expected that Tesla is going to be releasing its Q3 2024 production delivery numbers. Uh, this is important for us because it's going to give us a lot of insights on how Tesla is looking for its sales. And re remember, uh, Q3 is very important for the end of the year annual report. So right now we're looking for some nice numbers. Um, at 9 o'clock a.m. is when it's scheduled to come out. Sometimes they're a little bit late. Sometimes it could be a couple of minutes late. Sometimes it's about an hour late. But almost always Tesla does report on the same day, the second day of the uh, of the month for the month that kind of like follows the, the end of the quarter, basically. So uh, September 30th is when the quarter just ended. October 2nd is going to be the second day of the month after the quarter. And they should be releasing the data tomorrow, most likely before market opens. So be ready for all of that. What are the estimates telling us? So I've been listening to a lot of estimates. Some analysts are saying that Tesla will do 452,000. Most are saying around the 460,000 range. My, my calculations showed that in China, the data was very, very strong. China, Chinese sales were very strong. Uh, the American sales were looking promising but i wasn't as sure about this and i'm still not to this day as sure about how it's going to be looking like until we see the data tomorrow and then the european sales were a little bit lackluster so we'll see how it goes i want to go over troy test likes uh targets they do have a, have a tendency of being more accurate they have an average error rate of about 1.2 percent so their estimate is about 472,000. that is above the analyst consensus of about 462,000. my estimate was closer to about 465,000. but i said to reach seven uh, 470,000. We needed a very, very strong amount of, Amer of American sales. So we'll see about that. If American sales are very strong, then yes, we should be looking for some very nice numbers. We'll see about that for now. So what does this imply for Tesla? Well, it depends on the numbers. If Tesla does very poorly, if they miss expectations, we could gap down to 240 and dip. If we start off very strong, we could gap up to about the 270 area into the 270s. But be careful, guys, because the whole market could dip more because of this negative news. And there's no guarantee Tesla will just hold in the 270s. It could still slow down even after that. So we're either going to gap up or gap down most likely as long as the data comes up before market open. And we'll see how things end up looking. For more factors about the markets, okay, tomorrow is going to be Wednesday, October 2nd, 2024. There's not really much data coming out. Everything's very minor, at least on the economic calendar we have a couple of fed speakers like hammock and a few others but nothing too crazy throughout the day we also have bowman giving a speech later on in barkin but everything is very very minor i'm not really seeing anything too crazy besides that the market is still at greed it's making up the majority of sentiments we will see if we get closer to neutral though as the market is seen uh uh you know greed kind of slowing down that's why momentum is a little bit lower than before so we used to be extremely greedy just two days ago even yesterday now we're back down to greed uh, now the market's slowing just a bit. We will see if this continues as momentum is shifting. 
But the puts and call option ratio is at extreme greed as well. It's starting to go up a little bit, so we'll see if this gets a big bounce. If that, <coughs> excuse me, if that bounces, that's a sign that right uh, right now the puts are getting bought up a lot more, and there's a shift in the market that's perpetuating. The VIX is looking more bullish, and it's actually breaking past its very key 50 daily moving average. If it continues to do that, that could be a sign it's going to try to fill its gap. So the VIX is looking a bit more bullish to me. So what was the news telling us? I want to talk about an update on this. So. I'm not really here to give you guys a history lesson. That's not my job. So this conflict goes back down hundreds, if not thousands of years, and you could side with whoever you want. That's your choice. But it's not my job to tell you how this started. As a result of so much news and data, uh, what, what happened was this led to Iran eventually launching a missile attack on Israel. And now Iran is saying, so they just announced that they're done with the attack unless Israel retaliates. But just a couple of minutes ago, the Israeli military has come out and they're saying that they're going to retaliate. So this is a little bit scary for everyday citizens, for everyday people, because of the fact that this is not showing signs of de-escalating so far. So this could lead to a lot more attacks, a lot more fear, and this could lead to oil potentially going up. We saw a nice surge in crude oil, so it's not the best of news. So what do I think is going to happen? Honestly, it depends on what happens overnight. Will we see more attacks? Will things cool off? Will there be more threats of attacks? Right now, the situation is very tense. In my personal opinion, I'm going to be honest, I don't think that the majority of countries would just stand down if they were to get attacked like that. Uh, the majority of countries on this planet would likely still try to retaliate, and there's a very, very high probability that's going to continue. So I think that this is, could lead to a lot more conflicts. That's my personal pragmatic opinion. I hope I'm wrong when I say that. I wish for peace. We hope for peace. People are praying for peace, but we will see how it goes. But being realistic, guys, the odds do favor that this is going to continue, and we'll see how things go from there. The U.S. is also getting involved, which is affecting the markets. And there's another big factor affecting us, and that's this right over here. There's a historic strike that's going on in the U.S. ports. So basically, the seaports, we have dock workers who are involved in this. The seaports between the U.S. East and Gulf Coasts are expected to wreak havoc on the global supply chains and the economy. Uh, supply chains around the oceans have already been hit hard by the Red Sea conflicts, and now these are going to be affected as well. This is not anything small. We're seeing tens of thousands of workers getting involved. So far, there's about 45,000 workers and could even be more. This could even continue to increase, so it's affecting these ports. We'll see how things go with this. Hopefully, there are negotiations to be made. But for now, this is once again a little bit more bearish for supply chains, affecting couple, uh, excuse me, affecting companies like, like Apple in particular. For other factors out there, we have about 87 million in volume. That is below average for Tesla, but we're going to see a big surge in volume tomorrow for sure. Uh, short volume is going down a bit, so we're not seeing as much shorting as before before the event. And Cancer Fitzgerald is giving Tesla a neutral, a neutral rating. GLJ Research is giving Tesla a sell rating, so we'll see how it goes. With that being said, let's talk about the share prices and break down what I see for the charts from this point on. So what do I see for Tesla? The answer is we are in the middle. If Tesla wants to pump once again to the 270s, we need to see some strong numbers tomorrow. The numbers should be coming out during the pre-market session. So Tesla could gap up all the way up to the 270 area and try to break through these highs. Might be going all the way up to 270 plus, gapping up very, very strongly. Uh, but that's the more bullish case. If we get at least 465,000 plus deliveries or higher, if we beat estimates by quite some margin, this should gap up and go. If we miss and tesla only gives us about four hundred and fifty thousand, or even below that four hundred forty thousand. i'll be looking for us to retest for uh 240 if that fills us we're going to be looking for a dip back down to the 235 area so will we end up dipping 20 points will we run 20 points my goods tells me to be very very careful even if we do gap up guys i'd be a little bit mindful of the fact that the global conflicts are also affecting tesla so we could gap up and then dip a little bit as time goes on because of the broader markets even if tesla does end up beating right that's what my main point is we either gap up really hard then slow down as the day goes on or we gap down and kind of dip it's got to be one of those two most likely but overall we'll see if we get the gap up move or not that depends on the data i'm not really a fortune teller I think the odds favor Tesla doing well and beating, but we'll see what their share price reaction happens to be. Hopefully we do see a nice gap up. We'll wait and see. For SPY, I just want to call out that we're barely at support at the 50 EMA. So I want to go over the bullish and bearish cases and talk about what's more probable. So we have 5, 6, 7.5 is our support at the 50 EMA. If we lose this, we're looking for a dip back down towards 565 then eventually 562. Our resistance to watch for is at 570. If that breaks, we're looking for basically 574. 
Right now, we look a little bit more bearish and the odds are favoring is coming all the way down towards the 565 area and losing the support. That looks a little bit more probable looking at this head and shoulders and the fact that we are rejecting off a big red bar. So with tensions rising, the odds do favor that, you know, us going all the way down to the lower 560s, especially because the daily chart's looking a little bit weaker. Uh, once again, I didn't go over as much technical analysis for Tesla because technicals don't matter as much. It matters more as the data. That's why I'm, I'm focusing a lot more on technicals for the other charts. Uh, the daily looks kind of weak. We have a gap to fill, and we're kind of looking for bearish momentum to build. So this favor is downside, in my personal opinion. Whether or not this happens depends on the global conflicts, but it's still looking kind of weak to me. For ES, this looks weaker than SPY because we're losing our 50 EMA. We need to reclaim 57.68, then 57.85 to turn back up. If we fail to do so, the odds favor the lower 5700s. My guts tells me we might be dipping all the way down to about 57.30, then all the way down to the next imbalance towards 5700. ES is looking weaker, so we'll see if that ends up being the case, but that's what I'm favoring thus far. For NVIDIA, NVIDIA looks a little bit weaker. Uh, I do want to call out the fact that we have a gap to fill down here at 114 and also our imbalance at 112. We have resistance around 116.8, not to mention 119. We need to reclaim 117 and 119 to turn bullish. If we fail to do so, the odds favor 114. My guts tells me this looks more bearish as we're making a lower high. Uh, this is the lower high right here, by the way. We had this high up here. We came down with a lower high. And this might start dipping down to fill the gap to 114 and 112 as we look more bearish. For Bitcoin, we're looking a little bit more bearish as well. We're actually dipping right now as I speak, so it's still falling. We need to reclaim 61,734 to turn back up. Otherwise, we're at risk of continuing to fall all the way down towards the 59,000 area. So I do favor downside on Bitcoin. We're barely holding the 60,000 support, uh, 60,600 uh, around that area is our support. If that fails us, we're looking for a bigger dump to the 59,000s. So that looks more favorable to me. For other factors out there, we also have NQ. NQ looks a little bit more bearish off this head and shoulders like structure. We have resistance off the 20,000 area and the support to watch for closer to about 19,800. If that fails us, we're looking for a big dip towards 19,677. So, Law's favorite downside on NQ, in my opinion, off this head and shoulders. We need to reclaim 20,000 and 20,157, by the way, to turn back up. But this is favoring that it wants to go down to about 19,700, in my personal opinion. We'll see what happens with the news tomorrow, but it looks more bearish to me. If you look at the QQQ, we're losing support at 480. We need to hold above 480, break 482 and 485 to turn back up. If we can't at least get back above 482, the odds are favoring this gap fill all the way down to about 475. Then in a test of our 200 EMA at 472. The chart looks more bearish to me nonetheless, so I'm going to be 100% blunt about that. Apple looks kind of weak. We got to reclaim 226.35 and 228 to turn back up. If we don't reclaim 226, we're going to likely continue to fall as we have this gap down here to fill towards the 200 EMA. So 222 looks a little bit more favorable to me for that gap fill, and I anticipate some more downside. For Neo, we look more bullish on the four hour time frame. If we hold 6.5, we could try to rebound. If we lose that, we turn more bearish. We'll see if this holds to try to rebound. That's going to be a very, very key factor. So give this the time it needs. Neo is doing well because they had very strong deliveries, by the way. So they they absolutely crushed it. Uh, so that's a good sign. You know, the Chinese sales were not bad. Even Tesla's Chinese sales should be good. But Tesla also depends on the US, so we have to wait for that. But Neo could try to bounce and then try to push for the 7.5 7 area as time goes on. For Palantir, we look more bearish. We have a head and shoulders like structure. We need to reclaim 36.82 to turn back up. If we can't do that, we're looking for 36.29 as support. If that fails, we're looking for 35.5. My gut is telling me 35.5 is likely coming. So watch and see if we see more downside. That's the most likely case, in my opinion. For Supermicro, we look more bearish because we have this interesting structure. We are making a lower high relative to the high from above, and this may continue to fall. We have resistance to watch for at 42 flats. We have our support at 40. If that fills us, we could be dipping all the way down towards the 38. My gut tells me we could be rejecting off our 20 EMA and start dipping lower, so this favors 38 or below. Unfortunately, Supermicro looks more bearish. For Rivian, we look more bearish. We're making lower highs and lower lows and rejecting. We got a downgrade by JP Morgan. Uh, I'm sorry, not JP Morgan, by Morgan Stanley, excuse me, guys. And that could, once again, factor in for more downside. We need to reclaim 13.5 to turn back up. Uh, and also 11.25, sorry, 11.25, then 13.5. But I think this is favoring downside. I think $10 flats is coming, so I favor the downwards move. So watch and see if that ends up being the case. For so far, we're making a lower high relative to this high, so it's looking bearish. We need to reclaim 7.8 to turn back up, otherwise we're at risk of falling to about 7.5. I think the odds favor downside as we have kind of like an inverse cup and handle like structure. So I think 7.5 is looking more favorable for the 200 EMA. For the IWM, we look more bearish because we are continuing to fall. We got to reclaim 219 to turn back up. Otherwise, we're at risk of dipping down to about 215. 
Uh, I think that we have 216 support, 215 next at the 200 EMA, followed by 212 for the gap fill. So the odds favor the downwards moves. For AMD, we're looking at support all the way down to around 158. If that fails, we're looking for a dip all the way down towards 154. We also have this resistance around this 161 area. The odds are favoring 158. If that fails, we're going to be dumping even lower to 155. Overall, um, we are going to likely continue to fall to 155, so we'll see if that ends up being the case. For ARM, we have a bearish divergence. Uh, this may continue to fall. We have resistance, resistance around 137. We have the support all the way, all the way down here around this 130. Uh, 131 area. So I think we could be dipping closer to 130. If that fills us, we're looking for 128. So the odds favor downside for ARM. For Coinbase, we're rejecting off our 200 EMA and kind of falling here. We have this resistance around 165. And if we continue to fall, we're looking for a dip back down towards, excuse me, 156. So I think the odds favor 156 for a coin. We look weak right now. We're losing support. Amazon's looking weaker. We need to reclaim 187.75 to turn back up. If it can't do that, the odds are favoring 182.78, and I'm not sure if that's going to hold, but I think we could be tipping to the 182s. If they don't hold, we could go all the way down to 178. But I'm, for now, we're just going to focus on 182. I expect that to be tested soon. On the other hand, Meta is showing some strength. It's actually holding up a lot better. Uh, I could see this dip closer to about 170. Uh, sorry, 570. 570 could be coming. We'll see if we bounce off that or not. If we don't bounce off that, look for a dump from 557. But look for a dip for 570. We'll see what the reaction happens to be. For Microsoft, we look a little bit more bearish in my personal opinion. I think there's a good chance that Microsoft continues the downtrend that it's on. So it's looking more bearish to me. I think that this could be dipping all the way down towards... Well, it depends on if we could open above 420 or not. If we don't hold 420, I think we come down to this imbalance. It's about 414. Then the next level is going to be like around 409. So we look more bearish. We could try to reclaim 424, but the odds don't favor that. I think the odds favor the downwards move. So watch to see if that ends up being the case. For Google, we have a nice looking uh, you know, structure that's developing right here. Um, but the issue is we had this tough resistance around this 170 area, and we really failed to hold above that. So I think the odds are favoring us dipping even lower. So I'll be looking for basically 165. If 165 fails us, we're looking for a 163. Uh, if we break past 170, we could turn back up, but I think the odds favor 165. I think we're going to be dipping a little bit as the market is still quite fearful. So look for that rejection. For DJT, for those who are interested, we look kind of bearish right now. We could be dipping back down to uh, 15.4. It looks a little bit more bearish. So look for some downside and we'll see if we bounce or not. But that's the most likely move. For the VIX, I just want to call out the VIX is trying to bounce here. Um, we have a gap to fill all the way up here around this 22 area. We'll see if we break this or not. Um, if we end up failing here, we could be dipping back down towards 17.27. Uh, what I'm thinking is that the VIX already already like bottomed and we're trying to balance. I think we might be going for that gap fill. Also, guys, we have another gap to fill in the VIX, which could happen within the next two months. So by November, I think we might fill this next gap, which takes us all the way up to about the 36s. So I think what's going to happen is the VIX is going to start filling a lot of these gaps, and it's going to be looking for a breakout as the market sees downside. So we have this gap to fill on the VIX. The market may dip more as we see downside. For the 10-year Treasury yield, I also think that this could maintain the structure that's on. It's still kind of flat right now, so I'm going to give this some time. Not really affecting the market as much, but another big factor is the dollar. So the dollar is about to be testing 101.37. So if it breaks this, it's going to start pushing a lot higher. Uh, right now, it looks bullish. It looks like it wants to break out more, but we'll have to see about that. This is a contributing factor to why the market is slowing down as dollar the dollar is kind of like shifting these uh, the, this liquidity. So I think that's... Uh, this is not the best of signs so far because of the war that's going on as oil is going up. It's affecting the dollar. We will see if the dollar continues this run, but that is once again leading to more bearish momentum. So my view of Tesla is very simple, guys. I'm going to be very, very blunt. Tesla is going to gap up harder, gap down tomorrow. We either gap up into like the 270s, 270, 275, or we gap down around the 240 area. It's going to be one of those two targets in my personal opinion. Will we drop around, uh, I would say... It's about 12 to 16 points, or do we pump up 12 to 16 points in the upper direction and then end up gapping up or down? Yes, we're going to do one of those, but just know if the whole market dumps tomorrow, even if Tesla does gap up, it might not hold up as well. It could try to push for a little bit, but then it could slow down as the day goes on because of the whole market slowing down, if that ends up being the case. So I hope that's as clear as possible. Tesla will gap up or gap down, then we'll see what the reaction is depending on the overall market, but that's what my view is for tomorrow. That being said, guys, one more reminder, tomorrow before the market opens at 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, get ready for Tesla's deliveries. Troy Tesla, huge shout out to them for their great 
create content. They're estimating 472,000 deliveries. We'll see if that ends up being the case. So I'm going to be very, very optimistic. Uh, no matter what happens, even if we get some kind of dump in the markets and Tesla, right, it's another buying opportunity because there's so much upside potential for the long term. Okay, for the short term, if you're a day trader, be careful. I give you guys a warning about this in my second to last video of the day. So please be very mindful of all the risks and I'll see you guys very soon tomorrow in the next one. Thank you for listening. Have a great day, night or evening, wherever you guys are around the world. And I'll see you guys for another update. Get ready for Tesla's deliveries coming out for tomorrow and be prepared for a big move that's coming. Thanks again and peace out.